Today we're going to talk about allowable food and drink. It's chapter 25. So a question will be asked, why Allah doesn't want us to eat any food and every food? Why there is restrictions on Muslims to eat only certain type of food? And mainly the food when we talk about is the meat. Because the grass, the, the grass, or the vegetables, it's up to our like and dislike. The only vegetables banned is what? What vegetables banned? What sort of plants banned you can't eat? The ones that make alcohol? Yeah, not make the alcohol. The alcohol is haram, it's a drink. Mm-hmm. But what's yeah, the, but the plant that, uh, grape? Makes the alcohol, yeah, right? grape make alcohol. Grape and dates and barley and. You know, yeah, you are allowed to eat grapes and things. But what? Marijuana. Yeah, all the plants which make drugs. Yeah. yeah all. Hmm? Oh, make drugs, not alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the plants which make drugs, it's banned. So you can't grow cannabis in your house. You can't sell it. You can't uh, buy it. You can't. Why, why drugs haram? On what basis? Yeah? Because it changes how you mind. Change your mind, yeah, one of them affect your mind, narcotic effect. The Prophet Aisha Radhiana, she said Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu banned every mufte um muskar or mufatir. Everything make you make your mind clouded by alcohol, make you drunk, it's haram. Everything have narcotic effect on you, um it's haram. So the drug is haram because of its narcotic effect. What's the narcotic effect? Yeah, slows down, become a pathetic, and what else he become? Oh, I was just gonna say, doesn't um things with caffeine change your mindset? So is that like haram? No, if it makes you um drunk, or have a narcotic effect, like become careless, a pathetic, paranoid, aggressive. Yes, it's haram. Um, drugs affect you in three ways. Yeah, it damage you physically, but it affects you in three ways. Wait, is it? Wait, so if you can get addicted to cigarettes, can you make it haram smoke? Cigarettes is haram because of its what? Poisonous effect. It kills your cells or change them into killing cells. When people smoke, the smoking will keep changing the um, trachea cells and lung cells, and it. It's usually a bit big, and it becomes smaller and smaller until it becomes very small and start migrating, growing in within the lung or migrating to the brain or bones or something, and kills you. So it is um, it is forbidden because of its poisonous effect. The Prophet said, "Man akala min al-turab faqadana ala qatli nafsi." Whoever eats earth dust. You are helping to kill yourself. So anything kills you in slow motion, it's committing suicide as well. So you can commit suicide by shooting yourself or taking very powerful drug, or you can kill yourself by smoking. You die in 10 years, 20 years, but you're still killing yourself. It's haram. It's poisonous. It kills you. Drugs have three effects. If you look at the board, you'll find it is written as it's alcoholic effect. The drugs act as alcohol. Uh, it's narcotic effect. It acts like a drug, slow you down, or make you paranoid, or make you aggressive, or make you disturbed. Or it has poisonous effect. It's people who died from the drugs. Sometimes one dose could kill you. Sometimes they could be buying um, like uh, uh, cheap drugs. They mix it with other things. And sometimes suddenly somebody sell them pure drug. It's high dose, and they die from it. Or could have narcotic effect, could make you very psychotic. I saw um, a guy in Wales when I was in North Wales, and he took an overdose to kill himself. He was a university student, very present, very smart guy. I said, why you took the overdose? He said, I want to kill myself. Why? He said, because I'm uh, becoming schizophrenic. I said, how do you know? He said, I started becoming paranoid, aggressive, start uh, thinking people against me and trying to meddle and muddle with my brain, whatever. 
So he said, I walked into the high street, I saw a shop called Schizophrenia Fellowship. And he walked into the shop and he found the lady sitting there who was ex, ex um, schizophrenic. She was controlled schizophrenic, she's taking drugs. And he told her the story, she said, oh, congratulations, you're becoming schizophrenic. You will have this and this and this he's having. And they said, oh, don't worry, go use your GP and he will go to your GP. He will give you an injection called Dipixol. You will take one injection every month. You will be okay. And then he came out of the shop and said, I don't want to become schizophrenic. And he heard and read about schizophrenia. So he tried to kill himself. So I took more history from him. And in fact, he went to a party and they gave him ecstasy and speed. You know, these drugs, recreation drugs, they call it. And he became psychotic. He became like schizophrenic. It's called a drug-induced psychosis. Drug induces mental illness similar to schizophrenia. You know what schizophrenia? What schizophrenia means? A mental illness, yeah? You think like everybody's against you and you start to yeah. hate the world. Yeah, become paranoid, everybody against you, trying to plan against you. Okay. Or you could be very apathetic. You could be doing nothing, don't even wash or dress or feed. Or you could think that people are playing with your brain. They're taking your thought, they're putting bad thought in your mind, they're stopping you thinking. They're all sort of horrible experience now. Yeah, you hallucinate, you hear voices. Uh, rarely you see things, but you hear voices in third party. One of the theories, we don't know exactly what causes schizophrenia. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, dopamine in the brain and things. But the one of the theory which might be uh, accepted by you, you have dominant uh, hemisphere in your brain and recessive hemisphere. You have one of the brain more active and dominant. So you have the left and right. And for schizophrenic, they have both active. So the one which is receive information, the other one consider it coming from outside. So I think, oh, they're talking about me, I can't see them. Can't even. Uh, um, sometimes they, they could hallucinate in front of you. The only problem, if you are asking a schizophrenic about his symptoms, you must believe him. If you don't believe him, he will not tell you. You could be both, probably the most clever doctor in the hospital, but uh, if you don't believe the patient, he will just will not tell you because he will think you are going to laugh at him and he is genuinely, uh, as he says, that uh, and then I, had, I had a patient um, who um, um, I went to see and she said, uh, um, they're monitoring all my movement in the house. I said, how? She said, they came and put the World Wide Web in my loft you know, the World Wide Web, the internet, we call it World Wide, World Wide Web. She took it as like a web of uh, a spider. And she said, they put all the web all around me, observing me all the time. I had to believe her. Another one said, oh, there's somebody living in the loft and she comes every day and she check at me and check at my husband. And, and this lady with um, uh, another lady, she said, wherever I go in Solihan, there are people watching me. They even tell each other, they're all on the mobile. She's coming to you. She went to that shop. She's carrying this. I mean, there's a lot of youth in the high street talking. Um, they had nothing to do with her. If you go to the high street in Solihan, how many will be on the mobile? Probably half the shop are now, isn't it? Who are talking? But they're not talking about her. But she, because she is schizophrenic, she thought they're all talking about her. They're telling each other. So drugs are haram from three points. Narcotic is the most horrible. I had a patient who took one injection of morphine because he had operation on his knee, he was in pain, and he was ex-policeman. So he went, he starts accusing the staff of being against him, and they play cards for money with the patients, and they bring prostitutes to the ward and bring children for the patient to use and make money from them. He was very disturbed and went to the police to report them. So when he left the hospital, the staff reported him missing to the police. So when he arrived to the police station, they said, yeah, we know about you, they took him. And I saw him, and the only thing he did, he took this one dose of morphine, and that made him berserk. So I treated him, three days he was fine, back to his normal self. You can't mess with drugs. And the hadith of Aisha, the Prophet banned it. Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and kulli muskirin wa mufatir. Everything make you drunk or um, have narcotic effect. Now, um, well, say, so if, if you're at a hospital,
There's a lot of painkillers. Very rarely they give morphine, but uh, that guy was was probably in severe pain, and yeah, we we get the old one, but not all of them get affected. Some of them enjoy it, but that's problem now because people when they enjoy it, they go and take another drug, a third drug, and become addict, and they start wasting all their money, and they, then they run out of money, they lose the job, they start stealing uh, for money, they start um, sh- shoplifting and breaking into houses or do all sorts of criminal acts. Alcohol, it's banned. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whatever make you drunk, if you take large quantity, it's haram in small quantity. And then he said in another hadith, if I allow you to drink it like this, small amount, you will drink it like this. If, he, if I say halal to drink like this, you will drink like this. If I say halal to drink like this, you will drink like this. And that's true. That's true. The most pathologically liars known are the alcohol uh, addicts. They lie to their teeth. They lie, become pathologically liar. They continuously lie. Have you drunk any? No, no, never drunk anything today. They check the blood, <laughs> alcohol in the blood. There's more than what's expected. Now, when you come to allowable food and drink, why Allah made haram for us to eat apart from alcohol and drugs? What, why Allah wouldn't allow us to eat lions and tigers and um, Worms and uh, is it because of the food that those animals, like those animals eat, like they could they could be harmful if we went and they ate those? Because like, for example, if it's like a lion eats meat, so there could be like diseases in that. So yeah, there could be diseases in because he eats meat. Um, it's discovered in the eighties. In the discover, have you uh, probably never heard of mad cow disease? Have you heard mad cow yeah. disease? Yeah. yeah. What is it? Yeah, there's certain viruses or, uh, or uh, parasites will not survive unless it goes through a specific chain from animal to animal to animal. So, the, like scabies hit the brain of sheep. If you eat the brain of sheep, nothing happens to you. If the cow eats the sh- brain of the sheep, the virus becomes active. If you eat that cow, you get um, Jacob Gottsfeld disease, which is the, you become mad like the cow. The cow become mad, and so you. I saw one patient who became, uh, who had that in, um, pa- disease. He was 35 years old. I've sent his uh, bloods and things investigation to Edinburgh to do the tests. And so, um, so it's harmful to eat animals that eat animals. This is why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "You're not allowed to eat animals that hunt using their teeth or their." clothes. So these are not possible. You are not allowed to eat except one animal, which eat animals you are allowed to eat. Which one? Shark. Yeah, you can eat shark, but but more than shark, all the fish. Everything come from the sea, you're allowed to eat, although they eat each other. Why is that? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Because they are cold-blooded. It's unlikely they will give you any of their um, gems and also Islam didn't tell this is our guess and also it's unlikely to um, pass to you some of the behavior of the fish mainly the fish are tame actually now does that mean we're allowed to eat like crocodile it's I mean, not a fish crocodile. crocodile is not fish is it but they're cold blooded I mean, yeah, they live in both. It's, uh, it's uh, live both on land and yeah. it's called Barmayat, it's called like a reptile, yeah? And reptile, the Prophet Sallallahu didn't like to eat lizards, which is similar. So he said, I'm not banning it, but I don't like it. So most Muslims follow the Sunnah, don't eat. They don't eat reptiles, they don't eat snakes or uh, lizards or... Uh, but it, it hunts with its teeth, by the way. Yeah, it's haram because it hunts with the teeth. Um, the, uh, the snakes swallow the animal they hunt. I don't know. I mean, Muslims don't usually eat snakes. Some do, but it's not. It doesn't hunt with the claws or teeth. Oh, it it poisons some. Uh, mm? Some eat the teeth snakes. Yeah. yeah, some eat snakes. Yeah, some eat lizards as well. But lizards also hunt with their tongue. And, yeah. um, why does Hanafi say you can't eat all like types of fish? You can't eat fish which is poisonous. 
That's the only fish you can't eat. You can eat whales and sharks, but we don't, we don't hunt whales to eat them. You can eat fish. I mean, a, a, a small fish will feed a, a large family. I mean, I buy sometimes salmon, which is around five kilograms. Five kilograms will eat, will feed. How do you mean if you say that, for example, you can't eat shrimp and stuff? Like, they say it's mussels. If it is a product of the sea and it's not poisonous, you can't eat. وَحِلَّ لَكُمْ تَعَامُ سَيْدُ الْبَحْرِ وَتَعَامُهُ وَحُرِّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ سَيْدُ الْبَرِّ مَا دُمْتُمْ حُرْمًا Allah Azza wa Jalla said in the Quran that it's halal to eat what you get out of the sea, what you hunt out of the sea, or if it throw itself out of the sea. Sometimes fish throw themselves out of the sea or whales, but you are allowed to eat them. Uh, you, you're encouraged to, to hunt them now with the um, extinctions going on, there's so many hunting going on, so you're not encouraged to hunt whales and, and dolphins and things. Um, I heard about it, um, but um, Muslims differ when, because there is multiple sources, yeah? Um, so the, uh, but if it's boys, not as harm, even from there. But why, back to the animals, why were I not allowed to eat your cat, your dog? You're allowed to eat cats, around 10 cats in my flock. You could eat every day cats, then run out of cats. But why we're not allowed? Apart from becoming like meow, or, or scratching your brothers and sisters, and what, why are they banned? Yeah? Because they like uh, animals that are not allowed to mice. Yeah, but why, yeah, everything hunts with its teeth or claws, it's haram. So that general rules. Because the Prophet Sallallahu was not going to name all the animals, which some of them you never saw. The Arab never seen, like the uh, Antarctica bear. You never seen the white bear. They never saw uh, many animals in the jungle. They haven't heard of or seen. But the rules, if it hunts with the teeth or claws, it's haram. Yeah? Um, is it like, wasn't the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam really close with cats? Like cats, not because he's close with cats. Cats, um, he said about them tawafuna wa tawafat. They're not najis. They can walk into your house. They can eat from your food. They're not najis. They're not uh, so dirty. They are visitors. He said tawafun. They visit you and visit everybody else. The cats, you know, visit all the you know, the neighbors. Our cat used to visit all the neighbors. But why wild animals? Animals who hunt and apart. One of the things we spoke about before because they might carry viruses which will grow in you. If they go from animal to animal to you, then you get hit by these viruses and mad cow disease, one of them. Yeah? What about dogs? The same, it hunts with its teeth. Ha dogs, the people who keep dogs, when they come home, they jump on them and they lick their mouth. Why? Like the they make them sick. Why they want to make them sick? So they can eat it. Yeah. Because usually wild dogs in the in the in the wild Dogs belong to the wolf species, and they studied the wolf, and they produced a program on ITV many years ago. They called it the wolf in your living room. And when the mother come and the father, they keep licking the mouth until the mother or father vomit, and they eat the vomit, because that would be their food. They go and eat. They don't have shopping bags that come with the shopping bags. They eat the food, come and vomit it for the children. The children eat it. The same, the birds do the same. The same, the birds come. Either carrying the food or they you know, they bring out the food. Um, yeah, I don't think your mom would do it, but uh, or your dad. <laughs> hope not. Hope not. But the dog lick them. Oh, he loves me. He doesn't love you. He just want the food out of your stomach. And if they allow them to lick the back of the mouth, you will vomit, and then they will eat the food. They don't mind. So, but why? Again, the question, I haven't answered the question fully, why we're not allowed to eat dogs? Forget dogs, let's say, eat uh, tigers and hyena and uh, falcons and eagles. And you, can, you can't eat eagles and falcons and owls. And, because they eat animals, they hunt. With their clothes, they go on, catch it. And they could carry a baby. They have very strong, powerful, you know, um, legs and very powerful wings. So we could potentially eat 
any herbivores in anything that eats plants we can have anything eats uh, grass vegetarian yeah it wouldn't hunt them would it if it you, you're only allowed to eat vegetarian animals with limitation you can't eat disgusting animals you can't eat rats and mice you can't eat elephants and giraffe because they are um, discouraged to eat all these uh, all of, uh, you can't eat uh, uh, sna snails and uh, so there's a lot you can't eat insects there's a lot of things you can't eat I know there's a woman who swallows a, a fly but um, that's wants to die but that's a joke so you're not uh, so in Islam, you are only allowed to eat limited species, usually tame species. I mean, if you look into a cow or a sheep, would be in the in the farm eating, and then if not eating, chewing, chewing what, chewing gum, but they do nothing. It's so tame. If you see a cat, the cat will be looking. Who's after me? Where can I food buy food? You know, who's there? Oh, the dog will be always on guard. Why? Because built like this. They're built like this. If, if you eat, probably, if you eat a cat, then you can't stay in the house. You always go under the cars and go to the top of the dog. And we don't know. We don't know if you eat wild animals, what happens to you. And it's difficult to do the research. You can't bring a baby who's just born and feed him only pork. Why are you doing that? I'm a Muslim. I want to find out what's wrong with eating pork. But the baby will die in two days. He can't digest meat. You need to wait for another six months, a year, before they could digest. They can't even drink milk from a cow or a sheep. Why is that? The protein chain is very long. The baby cannot break it. So it has to be homogenized. They break it to make it digestible by the baby. But what else? What can be transmitted to you if you eat wild animals? Or pork? Because pork is a grass eater. It's not a... Why are you not allowed to eat? We wouldn't know, as I said, what harm come from them because we cannot run such a, an experiment. You cannot feed people only on cows and see or lions and see because it's not, this is not the way that human grow up. They need to go through milk and things and certain food. And Allah knows. Allah knows. If you eat wild animals, you might become wild, might become aggressive. You might become paranoid. Is an animal which people eat, camels. Camels known to be jealous and take revenge. If you insult a camel and he put it in his mind, you're not going to, to escape. He will catch you. And many, many times they kill their owners. They sit on them until they are dead. <laughs> they do. And I've seen quite a few videos. They killed the person coming to slaughter them. And they slaughtered them standing. And they get killed. Right, yeah, the uh, the camel. We have a village in um, Damascus where they eat mainly um, uh, camel meat, and they are known. Everybody know them there. They are very jealous, extremely jealous. Towards you know nobody can say hello to his wife or daughter or something, and um, the wives move with the one eye only showing. They cover all the face. I have a picture in my mobile. Their one eye shows. And they take revenge. And uh, one day I was in the market, and uh, there's a cattle market, and uh, they came and they shot one of their opponent dead. They kept chasing him until they found him, they shot him dead by taking revenge. Because he killed one of their member of their family. They have this, I don't know how far they are affected by the camel meat. Um, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man akala lahma jazurin Whoever eats a meat of a, a camel should have wudu. The scholars, Shafi, Hanafi, and Malki, and Hanbali, and all the scholars from that time, they buzzed. Why he said to make wudu? Although many Sahaba ate camel meat and didn't do wudu, so they didn't took it as obligation, but the Prophet must have said it for some reason, which we are not aware of. Probably somebody lost his wudu and went to go and have wudu or something. We don't know. But it could be that if you have wudu, probably you wash away the effect of the camel meat. Or, but we don't know. But if you come to Islam, haram to eat dead animals, you can interpret physically, say, you know, medically, you could start disintegrating and getting rotten very quickly. 
especially um, fish, if you keep them out of water for long without putting them on ice, they will rotten. You need to be quick in eating them. Um, but you're not allowed to eat dead animals. If you shoot, you're like you're hunting and you shoot a bird, and the bird, one of those who eats grass, obviously, and, and seed, and you find the bird is not injured, but it died because the bullets hit the bird. My brother used to go hunting with his friend. They used these small bullets, khurdos, very small. And they hit the animal enough to injure the animal, the animal bleed. But if you find the animal hasn't bled, there's no injuries, you can't eat it. Even it's just dropped, but the heart stopped. Probably more than um, disintegrating and getting rotten, because it takes time to get rotten. This is why Muslims who say, if you stun the animals and the animal dies before you slaughter the animal, you can't eat. Muslims, when they came to Britain, they thought all these stunned animals die and you can't eat. But then they discovered that 75% of the halal meat shops, they actually sell you meat has been stunned. They lie to you. You go to them and say, I want a halal meat. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's halal, slaughtered it. But it was stunned before it was slaughtered. So, and then they had to do the research and then they had to find out that. Uh, Many of them accepted now that uh, if you stun chicken, they will die. If you stun old cows, they die. But if you stun young cows, sheep, goats, they won't die. So when they do the stunning, the animal lose conscious, you slaughter the animal before they die. We do uh, electric shock to people to treat their depression. They don't die. <laughs> they get their depression improved. But in Jordan, in Egypt, in Syria, they use stunning. Why they use stunning? What they do, they have a corridor because you're not allowed to slaughter an animal in front of another animal. They have a corridor, all the sheep will be moving across the corridor. And one sheep come from that end, there's a guy there who stun the sheep, and there's two guys here who will slaughter it straight away. And they produce, like, you want to slaughter a million sheep a day to feed 15 million people in a city. You're going to have butcher in the shop slaughtering. You wouldn't have the time, the personnel. So they had the fatwa from the Grand Mufti. In, I read the fatwa in Jordan. Allow them to say, no, since the animal doesn't die, you can do the stunning and slaughter the animal. And that will be halal because you slaughter the animal. First, still alive. Secondly, it's safer for the animal. You're resting the animal. And thirdly, it's safer for those who are slaughtering. Because unless you are really very expert, the animal is going to kick you. And I've said many people were killed by camels and cows and even sheep. They wouldn't start jumping you. Um, try even to slaughter a, a chicken. It's not easy. Killing is not easy. And unless Allah permitted us, we wouldn't do it. Allah said in the Quran, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقُتَاءِ الْقِتَالُ هو كُرْهُ لَكُمْ That you will be obliged to fight and protect yourself. Although it's something you don't like. Muslims by nature don't like killing. They don't like, how many of you kill people? None of you. How many of you slaughtered the cow? You slaughtered the cow? Oh, um, when we were in uh, Aid, um, I helped. Like, I didn't actually like, Slaughtering what, chicken? No, or no, sheep? A cow, basically. A cow? Yeah. That's very were... difficult to... No, I didn't, I didn't slaughter it. It's just that we had the, uh, the bone and then you have to get this big bone. They, I saw the slaughterhouse um, in, uh, I think, one of the Gulf states, slaughtering cows. They put them in a, a special uh, machine, like the cow are confined to a space and things. But usually people don't like killing. The students went to a farm to study the farm, and the farmer every day bring a chicken to them to slaughter and make food. And they never slaughtered chicken. They used to put the chicken in the loft and go and buy from the supermarket. And then when they left, the owner found that there's 20 chicken up there in the loft. They couldn't slaughter the chicken. So people don't usually like to slaughter. But you are not allowed to eat dead animals, even if they die a few minutes ago. We don't know something must, have, must go with the meat. The, the type of meat you eat will probably affect your behavior, affect your component. When you, if your mom breastfeed a boy or a girl for 
four or five, uh, five breastfeed to the full, they say, whatever. It's criteria. But if she breastfeed, like my auntie used to breastfeed us. When my mom goes to town, she leaves us with my auntie. They were living next door to each other. If my auntie going to town, she will leave her children with my mom. And mostly they have children the same age. So we all breastfed by my auntie and all her children breastfed by my mom. And none of us could marry any of her children. She had one boy and five girls and my, my mother had uh, at that time uh, four, five boys and three girls. He couldn't marry any of my sisters. We couldn't marry any of my cousins. Uh, why is that? You, you milk a brother, you can't marry. Why is that? We don't know, but it is in the Quran. Um, you can't marry your sister's milk um, fed sister now. Why? No, if you marry your cousin, I say both of you have like, uh, I don't know, a genetic disease, you've got a higher chance of passing on that. Yeah, what happened? You are not allowed to marry your brother or sister, you will definitely get the uh, sleep diseases. You've got always dominant um, genes and recessive genes. Recessive genes asleep. They wouldn't show. But if you marry somebody with the same gene asleep and one asleep, then became awake and you develop the illness. So usually there's a lot of asleep genes, recessive genes in siblings. But why the milk brother, milk sister? So the first cousin, the prophet discouraged us to marry the first cousin because more likely there's similar genes in them. The prophet said, marry from distant so we didn't get the illnesses which will make you lose weight and become ill. So you're not allowed in Islam, you are not encouraged, it's not encouraged to marry first cousin. Unless it's extremely difficult, it's the only girl on, on planet Earth, or you landed on the moon and there's only two of you. Or something. But you're not encouraged. But what about your milk sister, milk brother? What they discovered, we discovered medically that they transmit when you, when you take milk from your mom, you take gamma globulin, something called gamma globulin from your mom, which helps in protecting you from infections. And you take from your mom something else. Anybody knows? From your mom, there's something else discovered four years ago. It wasn't long discovered in Australia. Isn't it where um, you have breastfeed? Because when the... What is transmitted in the breastfeed which you take? What is it? Antibodies. They, Not anti antibodies. Gamma globulin. That's gamma globulin. It's anti immune. It improve your immunity. But also you take from your mom something called stem cells. Anybody heard of stem cells? Yeah. Yeah. Stem cells are the undifferentiated cells. When the sperm meet the egg and become fertilized, they start splitting. Some of the cells become the brain, some become the muscles, some become the bones, some become the liver, kidney. Some cells remain as it is, stem cells. In case you need repair in the river, become river, part of the river, and the kidney, whatever. And they could take stem cells actually injected into people to regenerate the bone marrows and things and defend you. And stem cells, they took it and put it in rats, they could develop a, an earring or, you know, something. Uh, stem cells could become part of your body. So your breastfed sister could have similar genes like yours because she took stem cells from your mom. So you're both genetically probably very close. It's haram to marry your milk sister. So it could be that if you eat the meat of other animals, it could be that affects your behavior. We don't know. It's something we can never discover. We're not going to feed somebody uh, crocodiles from birth till he's 70 or, or 30 years old or whatever. You can't. You can't do experiments like this. So you have to rely on the maker. Allah Azza wa He said don't through the Quran and through the Hadith. Oh, we don't. And you are safe. When they started feeding the cows in Britain, the uh, brains of the sheep, they managed to get mad cow disease and dementia in young people called Jacob Potsfeld disease. And they start growing that virus and they became demented as young age. So don't risk it. Don't risk it. If animals eat anything, rubbish or whatever, they're called jallala. And you can't eat jallala. If there's, um, if your chicken like eating worms and dirt or whatever, you can't eat them. You have to take them indoor or feed them only grass in the open 
and seed for three days before you can slaughter them. And the same with sheep and goats and cows and things. You can't eat animals who eat rubbish. No. What about the produce of the like eggs and milk? Eggs. You can eat the eggs, nothing mentioned on the egg. The egg, okay, obviously it's more fertilized, it's more protected. When you have uh, uh, milk also, you can drink the milk from that cow. Or, uh, although no research done to see if they eat rubbish, what happened to the milk. But usually the milk sterilized as well, because a lot of diseases could come from the milk. Eggs could transmit typhoid to you. There were time when we have Edwina Curry was a minister of health, and there were a rumor about eggs carrying typhoid. So she came on the television and uh, she said, "Don't eat eggs," and she doesn't have a strong uh, evidence. She lost her job. <laughs> Edwina Curry, she was with uh, the minister. I think it was Margaret Thatcher or somebody or, or John T uh, John Major. Um, but if you say don't eat eggs and you are the minister of health. What happened to the egg industry? <laughs> Not only egg industry, all the cakes, or a lot of bread, a lot of food made with eggs in it, mayonnaise and things. So she made disaster. <laughs> so you can't give an opinion unless you are 100% sure. In America, um, uh, there is a lady, a very famous lady, um, on the British, uh, on American television, um, a black lady. Can't remember her name. Hmm? Homa, what? Hopa. She said we have uh, a Homa or Hoba, Hoba, something like this. Oprah, Oprah. Oprah. Yeah. And uh, she said there's cow mad disease in America, and uh, the industry the, the only mad cow we have is Oprah. The only mad cow we have in America was Oprah. <laughs> she's multimillionaire, by the way. She's uh, 200, 300 million more. She's very rich. But she said something which she shouldn't on the telly. We have mad cow. Means that you have to kill all the mad cows. All the cows which expose you. It's, it's uh, billions of uh, dollars. So don't give opinion. But we probably are told by Allah well, not to eat this type of food because there is a lot of sinister things could hit us and it could be too late to eliminate. Because, you know, imagine, imagine if we discover exactly what pork will cause to people. How much will be lost? How much money? How many industry will go? Uh, but it's difficult to find now. But if Allah said haram, it's haram. Allah said alcohol is haram. It took us 2,000 years to find out why it's haram. Or 1,400 years. Allah the Prophet said, don't take drugs. Now they are spending billions on stopping the spread of drug use. If you are a Muslim, it's haram. That's it. Uh, I don't need to know why. But if I discover why, that would be a good thing to, to know. So, um, allowable, not allowable food. Go and read uh, chapter 25. Uh, probably have, um, you know, you ha might have questions to ask me next week, and then we will go through it. Animals could, um, we didn't speak about eating the food of the people of the book, like Christian and Jew. Like that exemption in the Quran. Some people don't like to eat it. Some people do eat it. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Whoever e whoever take other than Islam as a religion, it will not be accepted from him. So all the Christian and Jew who were at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until now, they should follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If they don't, they become not believers. Are we allowed to eat their food, meat? sheep and cows and goats. In the Quran, yes. Yeah, they're not believers. Yeah, Allah said not believers. Allah said, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالْمَسِيحُ They are kafir, they are unbelievers, those who say that Jesus is God. And he said, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَ They are kafirin, unbelievers, those who say, believed in the Trinity. Prophet Allah also allowed us to, to marry the Christian and Jewish ladies. Um, so if you are um, to marry a chaste, uh, pure Christian or Jew, you are allowed. Prophet Muhammad carried 
married a Christian lady. Who was that? A Christian. She became Muslim, but um, she came to him as Christian. Some say he married her. Some say he is, uh, she is his uh, uh, a gift. Mulkul Yameen. When he sent letters to the leaders of the countries to become Muslims, he sent a letter to the Muqawqas in Egypt. And he was pleased with the letter and he sent him gifts. And one of the gifts was a female slave as a gift. And she came and the Prophet ﷺ married her. And he had a baby from her called Ibrahim. He died aged six months. The Prophet ﷺ cried on her. He married a Jewish lady. Although she became a Muslim, she was Jewish. Her name is Safiya bint Huyay. But some people say, no, we don't want to marry a Christian or a Jew because um, she had 10 boyfriends before me. And other one, yeah. But you can't, as a girl, you cannot marry a Christian or a Jew. Why is that? It's not the same. A man, a Muslim man can marry a Christian or a Jew, but not the vice versa. Because when a Muslim marries a Christian or a Jew, he already believes in Jesus as a messenger of Allah and Musa as a messenger of Allah. And he would allow his wife to practice her religion. He wouldn't mock her up and things. But if a Muslim lady marry a Christian or a Jew, they don't believe in Muhammad Otherwise, they will be Muslims. If they believe La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they will be Muslims. But they don't. If they don't believe in Muhammad they're not going to respect her salah or psalm or her charity, zakah, or whatever. They mock her up. I've seen two cases. One lady married a Christian, and he doesn't care about what Islam says. She was a slave um, uh, looking after his mom. And I saw her washing the feet of his mom. I went to see the mom and introduced me. Oh, this is a Muslim. Uh, my wife, she's a Muslim. She's using her as a slave in the house. And I saw another lady who married um, a Sikh. A Muslim lady doesn't care about her religion or Islam or anything. His children became atheists. They don't care. We visited them, but um, can't make any change. But he have been married for 15 years when we saw them, 12 or 15 years. So um, if you see the cases, how demoralized she will be and how abused she will be, you might say, no, you really shouldn't. Um, so Islam said, no, protecting our girls. So when it comes to food and drink, um, um, blood you're not allowed to eat, but the liquid blood. Blood inside muscles, you don't have to squeeze the muscles. You can't get the blood out of it. And there's two organs, mostly blood in it, you can eat, which is what? Yeah, liver and the heart, you have to clean the blood in it. It's a cavity in contained blood. You have to clean the blood. If you, if you see the rest of the blood in the heart, it means the, the animal wasn't slaughtered correctly. Kidneys. Because you usually empty the heart from the blood. Kidneys. Not the kidneys. Yes. Spleen. Yeah. Liver and spleen. Spleen is the symmetry of the blood. The spleen, when the blood comes to the spleen, it catches all the old um, red blood cells, send them to the liver, the liver destroy them, and send them out through your urine or your feces. This is why you get brown feces and you get yellow urine. If your urine become very light, either you've been drinking a lot of water or the liver is not working correctly, or if your stool become pale, not brown, become white, there's a problem there, the gallbladder is not working. So you are allowed to eat spleen and liver, although they contain a large quantity of usually damaged red blood cells, but you are not expected to squeeze the blood out of the muscles, um, uh, but you have to clean the heart if there is any in it, but then start being doubtful whether the heart has been, uh, whether the animal has been slaughtered or not. And also, you're not allowed to eat animals slaughtered by invoking other name than Allah. Now somebody who made this happy, had a child, he slaughtered the child in the name of my son. Haram, become haram. If you go to slaughterhouses, mostly they don't say Bismillah Allah Akbar. Will you eat their food? No. No. So you shouldn't buy any meat there. But most of the slaughterhouses, I'm talking about Muslim slaughterhouses in Muslim countries. They don't say Bismillah Allah Akbar. Some of them do. 
They have usually a tape recorder continuously saying But if you go to the people who are slaughtering, you know, an animal every uh, 10 seconds, they don't. And a person came to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he said, the people who slaughter animals without invoking the name of Allah, he said, eat it because if they invoke any name, they will only invoke the name of Allah. You wouldn't see a Muslim slaughtering an animal and saying, in the name of Queen Elizabeth, in the name of King Saud ibn Salman, or something. They don't. And also, Aisha, anha, she said to Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, she said, we get meat. Um, given to us as gift, we don't know. The people who slaughtered the animal, whether they said Bismillah or not. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to her, Semmi wakuli. You say Bismillah and eat. In fact, you have to say Bismillah anyway. And that cover you food, meat, or not meat. Because you need to take permission from Allah. In the name of Allah, I'm eating the bread. In the name of Allah, I'm eating the apple. If you don't say the name of Allah, Azawajal, Allah said, we will not intervene. So your food might be the food to kill you. Might have ulcer, might have diarrhea, might have... So if you say Bismillah, it's more likely Allah will help you first enjoy the food and secondly benefit from the food. Allah said in the Quran, فَقُلُوهُ هَنِيئًا مَرِيئًا The food and you enjoy it, and مَرِيئًا builds you up, benefits you. Because many people eat food which will destroy their kidneys, destroy their stomach, cause ulcers, and cause diarrhea, and things. And, um, dead animals usually, the worst will be if you catch botulism from them. They have this anaerobic gems which survive when there's no oxygen. And you, when you die, you will be bloated with the gas. <laughs> so if you go to Islam, Allah will put the basic rules for you to be safe and to be um, protective of the environment. Imagine if we were eating lions, they would be extinct a long time ago. If we were eating uh, cats, it would be horrible, no cats around. Do you like cats anyway? We used to have two cats, one was being snatched from us, the other one lived 13 years with us, and we gave it to a friend and lived with them two years and then died. Now, someone stole your cat? Stole my cat. If you keep the cat in your house for a week or two weeks, it become your cat. They will always come to you. They forget about previous owner. Now, if you um, it's like the things vegan and vegetarian, is that for? No, if you want to eat only vegetables, that's fine. But don't say to people it's haram to eat chicken or okay. or lamb. Or, it's not haram. But he doesn't like it. The Prophet saw a certain food he didn't like. He said, I don't like it. My people were not. My family were not eating it. My people were not eating it. If you want to eat, to eat. And lizard. I was given lizard, and he said, no, I, I don't like it. He said, it's haram. He said, no, I don't like it. And Khaled bin Walid was sitting, and he was eating it, started eating it. The Prophet was watching him. He didn't say haram. So if you see somebody eating a lizard or a snake, don't say haram, but don't eat it. Yeah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Number 110, 101, sorry. 